Yeah, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. We're continuing our look at those lovely little Italian TDs that have recently hit the tech tree, courtesy of Update 9.4. And let's be honest, there's been a mixed bag about them. Some people are liking them, some people are not. And, well, there's some reasoning behind that. A lot of people have been disappointed mainly because prior to their release when they were during the test a lot of people issued videos on the Minotaro and they were saying how OP it was, how broken it was, how amazing it was and then obviously it gets released. Now the thing is test tanks generally are broken when they are in the test because they need to be because the idea being you test them to find out what needs to be done to balance them and leak videos that you see saying that the tank is OP or broken or whatever really don't do the tanks any justice and all it does is end up upsetting you, the players, when they finally hit the game. Anyway, this is not a video about the Minotauro. This is a video about the Contra, what's it called? Contracaro 1 Mark II. That's the Tier 9 version. The Tier 9 Italian TD and that is the one we are going to be looking at today. So what I'm going to do, that's what it looks like, that's that's the, the tank in all its glory and as you can see it, it's got uh, a hull that bears a resemblance to a Leo 1. It's not a Leo 1, it's nowhere near but it bears the resemblance to a Leo 1 and then it has a stonking turret placed on the top with a three clip auto loading or auto reloader gun. So before we get into this, what I'm going to do, we're going to look at what I load the tank up, look at the stats of the tank, then we're going to look at the armor profile, then we're going to run into a few games. So without any further ado, let's jump in and have a look at the overall stats of this tank. So we're now into its stats page and as you can see, these, the CC1 Mark II comes with two different guns, both of which are tier 9. However, the top gun requires you to get that additional turret, which I've got. So I'm showing you a fully equipped, fully upgraded tank. Hit points, well, it's only got 1,800. That's not many, but don't forget, it is a TD. Frontal armor on the turret is stonking 265, and on the hull, 245. None too shabby. The sides and the rear, both turret and hull, however, are incredibly thin. Now, when we jump into the armor inspector, you will also see that the cheeks of the turret aren't exactly the best. View range, 244 meters. That's because the equipment I've got loaded will go through the equipment loadout, but that's not long, but it is, after all, a TD. Camouflage and concealment, well, this thing is not exactly well camouflaged. I mean, 42% while stationary, 33 when moving, and only nine when firing whilst being stationary that goes to show i mean it is quite a quite a big lumbering i can see you all over the map type td going down to the fire now this is where it really struggles now this is with the top gun dpm 1496 a minute i mean that is just terrible <laughs> let's be honest I mean, that really is truly terrible. 1,496 DPM, it's, it's just not the best. Reload time between shots is th almost four seconds. That's the inter-shell reload, by the way. That's not the, you know, fire shell one, then you've got another four seconds before shell, be, 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 you know, before it loads. No, 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 that's the inter-clip reload. The auto-reload time, wow, the first shell is gonna take you close to 24 seconds. Hmm. That's quite a lot. Then the second shell takes close to 13 seconds, and then the final shell close to 11 seconds. Now you start to understand why its DPM is so low. Shells and magazine, as I said, there are three. Penetration, well, the average penetration is near as damn it 260 for the AP, 326 for the heat, and 65 for the HE. Damage-wise, wow, well, you're going to dish out 450 on the AP, 390 on the heat, and 640 if you manage to get it in the right spot on that HE. Aiming time is a whopping 5.3 seconds. 
Dispersion, well again, it's, it's lower because what I've got loaded is 0 0.344. This means this gun is not as accurate as people think. However, look at that gun depression, a whopping 13 degrees. I mean, that's stir a meal territory. That really is. And the gun turn limit is 45 degrees left and right. Movability, wow, we've got a top speed of 35, but you're gonna knock out an average speed of 23, to be fair. Terrain crossing ability is not too bad. On the road, it's 102% on the ground, it's 73%, and in the water, it's 51%. So, what equipment am I recommending with this tank? So, this is the equipment I've got loaded at the moment. You will see I have not got calibrated shells. I am using the improved ventilation. Why? Because it brings my DPM up and it reduces those auto loading times for load, basically. If I stick the calibrated shells in, I'm only getting an extra 13 degrees of penetration on the AP. I don't think it's warranted and I don't think it's needed. I would rather try and increase that DPM, get it a lot better than what it is. Now, when I take that off, you can see my DPM drops by 30 to a mere 1,476. That is pretty shabby. I'm then using for Vitality the defense system just to reduce the chances of things like in crew injury, ammo rack, and engine damage. Then got a camouflage net. The camo on this thing isn't the best, so the camo net I think is really warranted. If I take the camo net off, I drop 15% of the camo rating. That is pretty terrible and over there that's with me running camouflage paint you know if I've got camo already loaded up then that gives me four percent so if I take the if I take the camouflage off then I take the the, um, the camo net off I'm dropping 19 percent so it's bringing me into like 20 odd percent region that's just ridiculous you do need I think both camouflage and a camo net on this tank I'm going down with the enhanced gun laying device. Why? Because it drops 0 0.05 off the aim time. Without that, I mean, it's already massive. Hit <laughs> five in something uh, seconds. If I, if I, if I, it's almost six seconds without the enhanced gun laying device. There's no need for the supercharge. I'm then using the four percent enhanced armor to the hull and the turret because it's better than giving me the additional hit points. I mean, the hit points is gonna knock me up to 1,908. I don't really need it to only give me another 108 hit points. When you're going out in a tier 10, that's, that's not even one shell. So it's better to have that 4%, I think. I've then got the improved control. I want that haul turn rate to be quicker because there are quick tanks in tier nine and tier 10. No point me having the engine accelerate it. I don't really need the additional speed. I need the maneuverability. And then using the refined gun, I have got no camo. I've got an auto loader gun and it's a TD. I want this to be accurate as much as possible. Now, as I keep saying, dispersion is you have the reticle and the shell, when it comes out of the end of the barrel, it will do this, it will fan out. The dispersion is how far it will fan out over a distance. So if I don't have the refined gun, then this will fan out quite a lot it'll fan out to almost 0 0.37 which means it move like this with the with the with the refined gun I narrow that margin down basically so you're going to be more accurate with the refined gun the thing is what's the point of having a vertical stab you're not going to be firing on the move I've then got the usual toolbox and high-end consumables talking of consumables I have the multi-purpose restoration pack. This is an auto loader, the no adrenaline. So I've got the engine power boost and I've also got the repair kit. Pretty standard stuff. Moving over to provisions. Well, I want my uh, crew to be at their top. So we've got the cheese head, which increases everything, brings the reload time down again, brings the rear range up, brings the DPM up. I've then got the protective kit, just want everybody protected in there. Then I've got the cinnamon roll, again, helping to improve the crew skills to get that DPM up and running. Ammunition loadout, well, I've got 30 AP, 15 heat, and 9 HG. And that's basically what I'm doing. But the thing is, you need to recognize this, guys. I've only got a 77% crew on this tank at the moment because 
nowadays I, I used to just say ah oh, sod it I'll spend the the, 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 the thousand uh, gold to get the crew skills up but I've decided there's no point doing that anymore so I, I get um, I just get the 50% crew and then I just grind the tank and that is why I'm only at 77% crew so let's have a look at the armor profile of this tank because a lot of people have been moaning about it being a pretty bad tank and realistically it isn't but let's have a look so this is what it looks like in Armour Inspector. Now I've been a bit naughty here. I am putting it against a Type 71, a Tier 10 Heavy. Why, Fujit, are you saying that? Well, because it is going to face Tier 10s. Let's be honest with you. Okay, it could face Tier 8s, but it will also face Tier 10s. So in order to show you the most effective armour on this tank, I've decided to go with the Tier 10. Now as you can see, these cheeks are wide open. They will almost it's not guaranteed but they will and can be penetrated same as the bottom plate so when it's facing off in a type 71 that's what you're looking at obviously if you wiggle and jiggle that narrows it down and you can see there it's very difficult to get those cupolas thing is it's got 13 degrees of gun depression so officially speaking you should be looking at it like this with that bottom plate fully fully covered 13 degrees is obscene if you think about it side on it's just pants but frontally that's how you should be seeing this tank and then those cheeks are no longer penetrable than that top plate is also but you should not be showing this bottom plate okay so that is the armor profile of the tank and that's realistically where you should be sticking it but what's this thing actually like to play in a game so let's jump into two games and let's have a look so here we are rolling out on Yukon in this little, it's not so little, in this tier 9 Italian TD, the CC1 Mark II. Now, as I said, there's been a lot of disappointment with this tank. A lot of people have been disappointed. A lot of people are sat there saying, oh, they're rubbish, they're not great. And a lot of that is due to the hype that surrounded the Minotauro. Now, the Minotauro got a load of hype because of two things. One, some of the people were basing it on the test statistics. Like I said, never base your leaks on the test tanks because they're always slightly skewed. And two, they're comparing it to a World of Tanks PC version, which I don't play World of Tanks PC, but I understand it's pretty, pretty mean. This one never went through test, but the hype from the Minotauro does sort of filter down onto the CC Mark I. No, no, sorry, CC1 Mark II. Now, the tank itself, I actually think it's quite nice, but but that comes with a huge caveat. And that caveat is this auto-loading gun. The problem it's got is the DPM is very bad, and you really can't afford to fire that last shell. Okay, now sometimes in the game you'll have no choice, but you really can't afford to fire that final shell in the magazine because you are then going to be residing with almost a 25 second reload that does not do anything any just i'm sorry about the replay glitching but yeah replays do what replays do the thing is I've, i mean i've only done 900 damage here no one smacked me and i i managed to take a couple of good shots in i'm now going to push onto the gsor why because it's effectively he's a one shot and it's going to allow me to finish him off I'm not setting the world on fire in this tank, and me being me, I generally don't play supremacy games. I generally play encounter games, so you know that way. I I feel you get a better feel of the tank in supremacy. You're gonna get more chance of getting those masteries in first classes and things like that. Where I find encounter gives you a little bit of a better run in with the tank. There is another CC Mark I. He puts a good roll into me, but I put a good roll into him. You can see I'm not bouncing him, although I did bounce him there on the track because if you lay him too low, I was trying to track him, but it didn't work. But now I get to finish him off. Do 2,124 damage. We bounced 560. We've taken two kills. We've had a bit of a stonking time here. We've only got one tank left. I've got to now wait an eternity for the reload. It will get there. And that is the Achilles heel of this tank. You've got to make sure don't fire that, that first shout, okay? Certain stances will 
prevent you, you'll have to, but anyway, once you do, then boom, you can do that. 2,539, 560 bounces. We kill three tanks and we get, you know, quite a decent return for our money there. Okay, it's only a first class, but I'm quite happy with that. Not too shabby, to say the least. Then this was like on the first day and then we get some decent credits so it's not as bad as people think well let's have a look at one more replay and let's see if we can improve on that and see if the tank can be any better so here we go rolling out on good old normandy and as you can see we're not exactly fast and we've got a really long reload time especially to load that first shell into that clip so we're going to try and stay as all down as humanly possible down here behind the rocks until we can load up. Unfortunately, this T-54 is going to be the pain in my backside throughout this game. Pops around the corner and I try to snap him and it doesn't work. That aim time is really long, guys. Even with all my equipment loaded and as much as I've tried to reduce it, it's still a hefty, hefty aim time. So I'm going to back away go back down try and get a hold down only presenting as I showed you in the armor inspector those really strong armor parts and once I'm fully loaded which by the way does take an eternity you can see how long it takes I haven't even loaded a full clip and already we are almost a minute and a half into the game I mean that's how long this thing takes we've got two shells loaded now the final shell will finally get there and one of the problems with this tank is that in the heat of battle, you don't have the luxury sometimes of waiting a long time for your magazine to fully load. And that's where this tank really struggles. I mean, the DPM is just shocking. Now, I want to put one into this WZ, and I want to back away and reload, but he's going to rush over the top. So I've got to do something here, and I've tried to track him, and now I'm on my excessively long reload yet again. Thankfully, I have got a 53 TP next to me. We get rid of the WZ. That's okay, but I still haven't loaded. I'm still struggling with the reload. I've 1,278, I've knocked out, I've bounced 400. I've got an Emil 2 to the right of me who's giving me a hard time, but I need to get rid of tanks here. Am I going to wait for that long reload? No, if I can take the shot on the IS-6, I'm going to take the shot. But no, the AMX comes up, he's, a, he's an easy kill, take him down. Now I've got to wait again for that long, long, long reload. And this is where a lot of players are gonna come unstuck in this tank. They're gonna come unstuck because they're gonna fire their clip, just boom, gone. Now, in this circumstance, I felt that it needed to be done because I've got plenty of support from the team behind, although they're not really pushing. Now, do I take a shot on the Emil? No. Do I take the shot on the WZ? No. I'm going to wait, but then the Emil pushes, so I feel I've got no choice. I've got to waste this shell. I get a nice roll into him 500. He's now effectively a two-shot, and that's that's the thing. So in the heat of battle, you're going to empty your clip in certain circumstances, and then you are in a world of pain. Thankfully, as I said, I have support behind me, so the T-54 can't rush me. It's now three against four. The Emil is gone, so I needed to put that shot into the Emil to be honest with you. It was a good 500 roll. We've done just over 2,000. We've, we've bounced 720. The SU is here somewhere. He's probably normally in the TD spot, sat at the back over there by the bunker. I don't know what H points he's got, but he's gonna give me, this is gonna give me the opportunity now to fully load the magazine, which is needed. There he is, there's the SU. So I'll get the bounce from the WZ, Put one into the SU, back away, use the 13 degrees, get the next bounce, SU's down. Can I snap one into the 54? Yes, I can, get a good roll into him. And now I've got one loaded. I don't want to take on the WZ. The 54, however, is being a pain, so I am going to try and put one into him. I could put HE, but I decided against it because of the dispersion. That's why I used an AP, wanted to make sure of the penetration. He's now a one shot. I have now got the luxury of just sitting behind this ridge, uh, loading. I've seen the WZ's fired. I'm gonna push down onto him, and give him a little bit of a ram, put one shot in, because that's all I can do, and hopefully we will take, you know, get a good roll here. We knock him for 400, not so good a roll. 
We finish the game just shy of 4,000, 3,935. We get one kill, we bounce 1,390. And we do a fair bit of assistance damage. So I'm quite happy with that game. As you can see there, we, uh, we did okay. And we get the golden M, which is exactly what we needed there. So not too shabby of a tank, but not exactly the easiest tank out there to play. And you've got to be very, very careful with this one. Um, it has got good armor, but as you saw with the armor profile, it can be slightly weak. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my take on the CC1 Mark II, the little, not so little, tier nine Italian tank destroyer that we've now got in the game. Not a bad tank, not the easiest tank to play, pretty tricky to be perfectly honest with you. But once you get used to it, once you understand how it can perform and what it can do, believe me, you can have some fun with it. Just be mindful, it has got shabby, totally shabby DPM, but you can be effective in it. Anyway, as I said, I've been Fujit, that has been the CC1 Mark II. By all means, comment and everything below. Would love to hear your views and thoughts on this one. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, really, that's what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.